enemy. Welcome back to another episode of the Hardcore Casual with your boy, Bass the Kid. Okay, so there's been a few things that have happened over the week. Um, I thought it was only right for me to obviously shed some light. We talked about the zone and the price hike and the schedule stuff in the previous video for probably a lot longer than I was initially planning on doing so. So apologies for that. But yeah, a few other bits and pieces that happened. So without further ado, let's get into it and see how much we can get through in a shorter space of time as possible. So as we saw on Monday, Anthony Joshua versus Jermaine Franklin was signed, sealed and delivered as a part of the schedule. Also, not on the zone pay-per-view. Now, to me, makes perfect sense not to be a pay-per-view and I said so on my previous video, um, not the one just uploaded, the one before that where I said it would make sense for it not to be on pay-per-view because then you could get more subscribers to come and join the channel, join the platform, possibly even stick around and then maybe if the following one is a pay-per-view or the one after that, then they're sort of you cross the bridge when it comes to it but not making it pay-per-view would mean that people would you know they, you would end up getting more subscribers to come to the channel especially if you have to have a subscription before you are able to buy a pay-per-view on the zone which can then be a very costly and pricey month um, which something you want to avoid so yeah had the press conference today um it wasn't a very long one it wasn't super entertaining but there were some very interesting things that were said the first things first is that i've noticed anthony joshua has started doing this thing where he won't let a question kind of finish he'll he jumps in at the point when he wants to answer as opposed to being asked the full question he, he'll pick his point that he sort of has taken and then he'll just sort of take over the lead i've noticed him started do that recently it's not something he used to do before um i don't know if that's him just being bored of hearing the same questions quote unquote so he kind of just wants to talk about what he wants to talk about or if that's maybe just a newfound mentality of you know what like get this out of the way because i'm ready to go but it's interesting another thing that was interesting within this press conference is that when he was asked what are you in this game for now he said money he goes i mean look we're, we're prize fighters we, we fight to get paid very very rare that's never been his stance before. Before his stance was always, I'm in it for the belts. Like I want the legacy. I want, you know, I want to be undisputed, da da da. Now he's openly saying that I want the money. So does that mean that his heart is no longer in it? Does that mean that he's gonna actually, he says that he's taking training a lot more serious now than he ever did in terms of nutrition, focus and blah, blah, blah. But if money is his goal, is that the case? Unless he's saying, well, in order for me to make the super big bucks that I want to make against, I guess, a Fury or a Wilder, then I've got to take it serious because I've got to get past man like Franklin. I don't know. But the fact that that seems to be his switch now, or at least that's what he said, leads me to believe that this next phase of life for him may not be as title driven as the previous which to be fair is you know it makes sense he's what coming up to 33 this year you got four to five years in the game realistically if you really want it i guess you can look to maximize even more create even more financial wealth and financial freedom for yourself and your family i don't particularly hate it i don't mind but it's just interesting that he said he's on the money thing now as opposed to legacy regaining the belts and then whatnot and it was interesting to hear i want to know what you guys think about that um but yeah like i said it's not pay-per-view so at least that's one less thing for people to moan about um i mean we can remember we got fury chisora free what was that 26.99 something along those lines Wilder Hellenius in America, $80. Ruiz Ortiz, $80. 
this one 1999 with your subscription or free if you've got the yearly thing anyone complaining at this point is just complaining for the sake of it that's how i look at it but yeah uh good fight and again your boy was the one who told everyone back in november it was gonna happen i'ma keep saying it until all those flowers come in but yeah let's move on to something else speaking of press conferences now while i didn't watch this one i am aware that tommy fury didn't show up to the jake paul press conference now the word is that he needed more time for training i guess maybe to make the weight that he needs to make potentially because tommy fury in all of his fights he's never actually made the light heavyweight limit so i don't know how how much you know timber he needs to get off of the frame but yeah he didn't make the press conference now dylan dennis didn't make the press conference for ksi in the last mitzvahs card and he ended up pulling out is is uh, tommy fury gonna pull out for a third time i mean history would kind of tell you that that could be the case for all the for all the bluster and everything that he that he puts in i think he finally realizes that this is a you know this is a severe test that he might not be ready for or even if he is ready for all it takes is one shot and his whole life becomes a meme i'm not sure if he's actually ready for that i, I truly think this fight doesn't happen but if the fight does happen i don't even need to do a basis picks i'm telling you now like jake paul knocks him out cold and it won't even be it's not even going to be a ref stoppage it will be it's going to be a cold knockout i just i see it i've seen both of them i've seen both of their trajectories i've seen both of their improvements or lack thereof since their very first fights up until now and jake has just taken over like leaps and bounds ahead of tommy fury I feel like it's going to be an embarrassing day for the Fury family but let's hope that the fight actually happens first uh, someone else can maybe tell me what happened in the press conference because I'm not going to bother watch it but I did think that that was an interesting take that you know yet again Tommy Fury has found a reason not to fulfill his uh, obligations but uh, yeah you let me know what you think in the comments and uh, we keep it moving now, Eddie Hearn says essentially he's waiting on an offer from ESPN and Top Rank if they want to do the um, Bomb Gardner versus Mayer 2 fight. Now, apparently, the rumor was they put an offer out to ESPN after the first fight and Top Rank, but Top Rank rejected it or said that it wasn't going to happen, whether that was they're not going to put it on platform or not so i think after that they've been waiting saying well okay make us an offer and if it's good enough alicia will go over and she'll compete for the undisputed and thus far it doesn't appear as if any offer has taken place now it's weird that top rank would even go down that route if true because they were just about to send michaela mayer back over to the uk for a card on march the 11th um, the Catrell and uh, Taylor fight send her over to Scotland I think it would have been to, to have that match but it's like she's a US based fighter she's like why are you now are you trying to build her profile outside of the US do you not do you want other people to pay for her fights because you no, no longer have interest because she doesn't have a belt anymore I don't get it like you want to loan her out to all of these other platforms to fight on but then the zone offer you the fight supposedly for whatever amount of money but just because you really don't like the zone you don't want her to go and box over there you're not doing anything with her it doesn't make it doesn't make much sense to me and what also makes even less sense was the fact that she re-signed the contract with espn knowing that they didn't even have a female roster over there for her to fight everyone you bring has you have to bring off platform and even now there's only two women on their roster which is her and Sinicia Estrada 
the whole move just don't make sense unless it's you like oh well, i want to be like the poster girl or the face of women's boxing on the platform well now you ain't got no belts and now they've got nothing for you the christina Leonardo two fighters being pushed to another event I, I now i wouldn't be surprised if that ends up landing on the lawrence okoli card that's what may the is that may the 18th may the 11th i'm not may so in march i don't know it's the whole thing's a mess at this point either way like whatever the issue is between bob aram and eddie hearn just fix it because now you're costing your own your own fighters opportunities alicia said look she'll do the rematch now she's undisputed like she'll she'll she don't mind she wanted to be undisputed now she's got that so she'll take michaela 130 135 so if you're not going to put the money up yourself then send her over michaela wants it i don't understand that i don't understand the issue i really don't like there's certain levels of i think it's, it's clearly they see a threat there you don't want the threat to to continue to build and grow but as much as it's obvious if the zone wasn't a big player or wasn't a serious contender in the us or wherever else all those other promoters number one wouldn't be banding together to to stop and block everything they do or they wouldn't be talking as bad about them each time because nobody talks bad about a rival that's that's nothing to do or talks bad about someone that's not a rival i should say that like, you don't you realistically won't see apple talking bad about xiaomi they're not on the same they're not on the same level but they might shade samsung and vice versa because they're a bit closer together in terms of competition and market share so yeah the fact that everyone's always at on at the zone and matrim means that they must be doing something right pointing out every single failure and missing every single success but yeah ultimately let the girl have the fight if she has to move platform let her move platform stop being long it's that simple so Gennady Golovkin vacated his IBF um, middleweight championship which means that um, Eskiva Falcao will be fighting for it I'm not sure who will be next in the rankings um, the IBF are gonna have to call a you know a vacant title title bout but Falcao will be the number one challenger for that uh, Golovkin has also been um, ordered now to fight um, Lara because he is the WBA regular middleweight title titleist and you know they are doing their belt consolidation thing at the moment so yeah um, Lara is gonna have to that's gonna be the next fight unless um, Golovkin decides that he now wants to vacate that one as well and maybe just go off do his own thing or retire or whatever he did say he wanted to come he wanted to um, defend those belts previously so i don't know why he's decided now that's no longer the case unless maybe he's looking at his bank balance and saying mm, these fights ain't they're not worth me getting out of bed for which i could almost understand um he's made a lot <laughs> over the last couple of years so if he just wants to live out life then cool do you think but yeah that's the news um ultimately i can't blame him turning bossing 41 this year like or coming up to 41 anyway um yeah it's i don't i don't really blame him to be honest i wouldn't blame him if he retired if so enjoy it but um yeah we'll see what happens with that other belt but i reckon that's going to end up getting vacated pretty soon as well lastly a bit of interesting news here so deontay wilder has now been the latest of i guess the trio of heavyweights in the division that have decided to mention and call out francis and garnu he is also saying that he wants to do the one in the ring one in the cage um type scenario same as what dillian white had proposed i think anthony joshua was there was just potentially talking about the ring for them 
I think Tyson Fury said he wanted it hybrid. He wanted it in a boxing ring, but with the four ounce gloves. Um, you know, but boxing rules, or was it boxing rules in the cage with four ounce gloves? It's one or the other. Um, so yeah, look, either way, I reckon by the end of this year, if not the end of this year, the start of next year, Francis Ngannou will be fighting one of those four heavyweights, whether it's Joshua, Fury, Wilder, or um, Dillian White, because maybe even Derek Chisora at this point, I'm sure he threw his name into the hat as well. It's mad, like he's like the biggest meal ticket for all of them at the moment, because even though he's got freakishly strong, scary, you know, unhuman-like power in his right and his left hand, he's got no footwork, no solid base for a boxer at this time i mean we don't know how he's been training recently maybe he's developing little bits here and there but i think all of them are seeing this as like a bank robbery of the highest order very similar to floyd mayweather and conor mcgregor so i mean yeah deontay the only thing is yeah Deontay you might want to have him in the boxing ring but you want to stay out of that cage like you ain't got the frame to uh <laughs> to win that fight against him you already saw what Tyson Fury did pushing you around with no use of legs, elbows and knees. Yeah, Ngannou, will, that will be a very, very bad night for you. And to be totally honest, Ngannou versus Wilder in the boxing ring isn't actually that big of a mismatch because Wilder's boxing fundamentals aren't much better than Ngannou's. And they both bang. So it's literally about who's going to get to the shot first. Deontay Wilder may have the better delivery system, but again, as I said, Ngannou has actually got freakish power in both hands. And he throws awkward shots as well, very similar to Wilder. So you could get caught with one of those and we can look at Wilder's frame and tell it's not built to absorb shock well. We've seen it throughout, throughout the years. So of all of them, that would probably, to me, be the most competitive within the boxing ring. But in terms of inside the cage, the MMA thing, the most competitive would be Dillian White. Um, so I'd actually like to see both of those at some point. At this point, I don't mind the hybrid stuff. I just want entertainment. <laughs> that's, that's literally how I'm looking at it. But look, let me leave it there. Um, I'm sure there's other stuff to talk about, but right now I'm tired. I've, I've got other things I need to do. I need to decide whether or not basis picks is going to occur this weekend as I'm not hugely happy about the level of competitiveness for a lot of the cards. But um, I might still do it because there are a couple matches that I'm interested in and I will be in attendance. So it makes it a bit more, um, makes it a bit more lively for me while I'm there. But yeah, uh, leave comments down below. Um, like and subscribe please share with a friend a colleague uh, get everyone sort of on board just that so we can work to that magical 1000 as soon as we get there then we can start doing bigger and better things with the channel but until then thank you for watching hardcore casual out